I look, I can't help but be drawn to this match because there's so much happening. And I wanted to talk to you about the fact Manchester United clearly trying to play out from the back, right? But they're having problems doing it. But no one's offering them the opportunity for them to go long. So Xerxes should be further up at the halfway line, ready to receive the ball so that when they're under real pressure, there is a way of getting out. Sometimes you have to vary a game. And if they don't do that, they're going to find themselves in massive, massive trouble. They've been caught so many times. They've just had a situation where, again, Tottenham have broken down the right-hand side. Diego Dallo should have been playing for the Salford um, Red Devils. <laughs> He's gone and done a rugby league-style tackle right around the middle of the ways to bring down the escaping Tottenham forward. He's given away a free kick on the far side and how he's gone into the book uh, as well. This is a, both fullbacks now have been booked. This is a performance of such, it looks scatterbrained. It really does. And if they're not careful, it is going to run away from them. I mean, they're, they're very, very, very fortunate that it is 1-0. They've had one or two opportunities. Garnacho's just hit the outside of the yeah. post. Xerxes missed a good chance. But Spurs have had six good chances yep. apart from the goal. Yeah, and and do you know what the thing is as well? And by the way, we should talk Ipswich because even though they haven't won a game yet this season, I'm telling you they've had difficult fixtures and they, and, and they've been they've well structured. Apps and they've been well structured. And obviously, I'm not suggesting that Kerry McKenna should be the next um, Manchester United manager. He signed a long term contract. Oh, has it gone close again uh, with Ipswich? And I hope he stays there for a good couple of years. This is a team here that we're seeing one where for all his faults with Ange and whatever you say about, you know, it's almost gung-ho football. Everyone knows what they're supposed to be doing. Everyone's compact from from the, the strikers to the midfielders to the holder midfielders to the defenders as well. There's there's not that space that there is for United. They just look like a bunch of individuals at the moment. Honestly, Jolian Lescott doing his DJ course has been involved in less transitions than Manchester United <laughs> in this game. It has just swung from end to end to end. They just keep giving the ball away, man. Manchester yeah. United they're trying to play out from the back they can't do it Spurs are turning it over high up that doesn't mean that it isn't without risk by the way because there's certainly been some risk to Tottenham Hotspur but the reward has been so great I'll tell you what it, I'd be surprised if there's not a, a sending off in this game oh there is Alex Crook oh my word 42 minutes on the clock Manchester United nil Tottenham one Bruno Fernandes the Manchester United captain has just been given his marching orders it was for a late tackle over on the far right-hand side. Fernandez is right in the face of the referee. He looks perplexed. I'm not entirely sure what Tottenham player it was. James Madison, I think it was who Fernandez caught. He is protesting his innocence. You guys might have got a better view on the replay than I have. I'm watching it now. It's a red card. Oh, it's high. It's high from Fernandez. And you know what? That just about sums up the lack of discipline in this first half from Manchester United. They have been all over the shop. And Bruno Fernandes, the man who wears the captain's armband, the man who's supposed to lead this team, has gone flying in there. He can have no complaints. And that just about sums it up for the home side. That is an atrocious challenge. Crook, I think he slips. Yes. But once he slips, why does he extend his leg out the way he does? So, so, so for me, I, I, I think the slip means that it now looks worse because he's, he's kind of gone in with his studs, but he's not gone with any excessive force in my point of view. And look... He should know better. It, no, it, but, but, but he slipped and it, it's a split second. And, and, and do you know what, Sam's Cookie? right, though. He, he extends the legs. He can pull yeah, the leg he, away. Extends it, it, it's a foul, and for me, it's a yellow card. But, but I just think because he slips that he stuck his leg out and therefore the angle of the foot coming in is not really of a excessive force there. Uh, look, They've in, lost their heads already. Yeah, absolutely. Went diving in. Sam uh, talked about that tackle. Dallow's been a car crash, got caught the wrong side, rugby tackled a player. United got hammered here. We were here when they got hammered by Liverpool. I'd argue this is a worse performance. Yeah, no, his, his head's gone. His, his head has absolutely gone and you don't make that challenge at all once you've slipped so you're not wrong and he can't really argue it I, and, and maybe I'm sort of splitting hairs here but because he slips I think with him sticking his leg out it's almost like one of those professional fouls where you bring in someone down okay I'll, I'll take that here at this end of the pitch because I don't want them to counter the thing is Scott if you slip in that situation and you don't extend the leg you may well still commit the foul and actually the referee then may well end up giving a red card but it will go to VAR and the VAR will say he slipped and then he tries to put his I leg well away. I don't think VAR will overturn that well, they're not going to overturn this no, because no, his leg is high Way. up on the shin of the player almost on the knee of the opponent yeah, as that, a result that's the that, thing they've that, got to make a change that's the thing that makes it the red I, I, I feel it's slightly harsh on Bruno but what, bottom line is his head has gone 
The United team has gone. You, you just called That's it seconds beforehand. Scott. It, and it's, un, it's unforgivable. It's unprofessional. It's oh, unprofessional. He's the captain, by the way. Absolutely. He is I the don't captain, disagree with And you. he's let his team down. This is a big decision, though, that Eric Ten Hag has now made. He's withdrawn Kobe Mainu and brought on Mason Mount. Explain it to me. Kobe Mainu doesn't look happy at all. Casemiro, one of the other United subs, is almost having to console him. Mount is coming on. <laughs> we'll ask Eric Ten Hag afterwards. I mean, if he gives a coherent answer, it'll be different to what he has been doing. Is he injured? Is he injured? Because he's walking down the touchline, isn't he? he? Well, he's hobbling down the touchline, yeah. Um, so maybe it was a reaction to that as opposed to the fact that he's been sacrificed. But it's a bold move, isn't it? And, and you can hear the boos from the Manchester United fans. Not necessarily because Mason Mount is coming on, but because they're down to 10 men and they've taken off one of their defensive midfielders and brought on an attacking player. And they've obviously got Casemiro on the bench. You could have come on in that position. You could have moved Lissandro Martinez into midfield. It's a gamble. Ericsson could have gone. And Ericsson's been playing well, by the way. This is the other thing that doesn't make a lot of sense. United fans have been crying out for Agate to be in the team. But Christian Eriksen has prob probably been their best player in the last three matches, and he finds himself on the bench. Marcus Rashford went months without scoring a goal and had a shot on target. He kept picking him, scores three times in two games. He's on the bench. Is there, a, is there a possibility? We'll come back to Crookie in just a second because it's half time in around about five minutes. They've got five minutes of added time. Is there a possibility here, Scott? that actually the fact that they're down to 10 men might do them a favour in a sense that they'll become so defensively minded now that those gaps that were appearing as, as Spurs were playing in and around them as they were trying to stretch the pitch and get up very quickly and play out from the back might disappear. Yeah, but they're 1-0 down, Sam. I mean, it's, it's not like an Arsenal one at the Etihad where they're 2-1 up and you say, OK, right, come and break us down. You know, they have to score a goal. And, and look, uh, all, all the time it's only one goal in it, then it just takes one bit of brilliance, one mistake or one set piece but they look a million miles away from getting a goal at the moment. If anything, as we've just said, the scoreline flatters United, not Spurs. So it, it's a big move. You and I are both big fans of Mason Mount. I don't think anyone can argue that he's done well so far in a Manchester United shirt, but obviously he's had an injury. But to bring him on when Ericsson, as Cookie's been saying, has been playing well recently, and actually, in, in, in that sense, you're going to be more open with 10 men and playing Mount for Maynou. Well, he covers a lot of ground, Mason Mount. That's one of the things I think that they're thinking about here is that he does. He covers when he's a lot match of ground. fit. When he's match True. fit, yes. Um, uh, that's it. What an idiot. Captain, question mark, question mark, question mark, exclamation mark, exclamation mark, exclamation mark. <laughs> I'm off. No second half. Can't take it. Ten half gone tomorrow. Jill is that has Jill? gone full yeah. circle. Um, oh I have patience with Eric Ten Hag. I've lost faith in the players that seem to have become scared to attack. I'm sick of watching attackers run at the defence, stop and pass it back. Inevitably ending up back at the goalkeeper. I got tired of watching England do it, turned off the TV. I'm doing the same watching United. All of the stupid rule changes FIFA have brought in, maybe they should learn uh, from NBA and penalise teams when they pass it back into their own half. Fans want attacking football. What's happened to getting the ball to the line and putting crosses in? Stop dilly dallying with it Michael in Thorn half time coming up from Old Trafford next on the Sunday session on AM on DAB via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker TalkSport